Right, it's Tuesday, the 6th of August 2024. Indeed, our pleasure to have you join us on News Hub today on Silverbird Television. I am Shun Uyidiji. And I am David Babudike. So good to know you are there. Welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of the show on today. Uh, fantastic conversations we have lined up for you uh, today or on the show. Um, quite some news uh, making the rounds, um, quite some interesting, interesting news making the round, and exciting news around the protests. Uh, we did hear that um, some of the protesters are far away in the north were, you know, were throwing around uh, the, the Russian flag. That became a huge concern to uh, security operatives in Nigeria as um, Nigeria being a sovereign, sovereign nation, you don't uh, fly the flag of another country right here in Nigeria. Very huge concern, which we'll be looking at on the show today, uh, on our focus segment of the show. Absolutely. And um, when would a protest be crossing its bounds? Uh, we want to take a look at that on focus today. Uh, still on the show, we want to uh, bring health to you. It's Tuesday. As much as the pulse of the nation still protests tea, as some Gen Z's will call it, uh, our health is very paramount and we as an organization will keep that in check. I know that for a lot of people, what's going on with regards to the protest right now is giving them a lot of emotional stress. Some don't know, I mean, a lot of stress. You're, you're apprehensive. You have no idea what could happen, especially in the parts of the country where the protest is very hot. Uh, so we want to, more than anything, see how we can now deploy digital uh, technology to help us through. Uh, I know that in some parts of the, uh, of the world, uh, especially during the COVID-19, uh, the teledoc became very, very popular. Aside that, in what other ways can we deploy technology to better health? We want to take a look at that today on the program. Yes, and then we'll now dive back into the biggest news. Uh, making the rounds of the president's speech over the weekend as we take a look at uh, other business and economic um, policies in uh, Mr. President's speech. He, he spoke quite a number of things. He said quite a number of things. He talked about um, the singular fact that um, they've been able to ramp up uh, uh, revenue to about 9.1 trillion naira. They've been able to reduce uh, debt servicing to about 60, 60, 68 uh, trillion uh, Nara and all of that, you know, fantastic 68% rather of uh, revenue, you know, many, many other conversations he talked about. So we'll be looking at that on the show, the business and economic policies in uh, the speech made by Mr. President over the weekend. All right, uh, we'll continue our focus on the nationwide protests as uh, the call for dialogue with uh, progress organizers will also be looked into today. In what ways can the government really bring these people to the table? And is it about the organizers not uh, ready to meet with the government or the government not ready to meet with the organizers? Uh, if, there, if anything that the president said on Sunday is what we can go by, he said that we should come to dialogue. So is that dialogue in the pipeline right now? Is there anything, is there any mediator who's really talking about this? I've heard instances where people had called on the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, who's now the Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajabiamela, too. He knows how to mediate, to find a way around bringing the dialogue, uh, the, the organizers, to dialogue with the President. Would there be an option in days to come? It's day six of the protest in Nigeria, as we can tell, you all can see at the moment, has to stand up and rise up to the occasion. We're taking a look at that today on the program. Yeah, and finally, we'll be looking at um, global concerns uh, with uh, Dane Waters uh, around the world with Dane Waters uh, later on the show today. There's so, so much news coming out from the international community. Bangladesh is actually in uh, the picture as we speak. Uh, the UK is in the picture as we speak uh, with many, many concerns. And the US election too is also many concerns that we just might be looking at with Dane Waters on the show uh, today. Yeah, and that will be it uh, for all, from all of us here. So we'll go on a break right about now, just to also know that you can be a part of our conversation today. You're not left out, the phone lines will be open. Uh, you can join us through all segments of the show. And then you can also join us on our social media, uh, all our social media platforms uh, uh, for more conversations. So we'll go on a break right about now. We'll come back uh, as the focus segment of the show.
Tune of our exciting journey of 2024. We are ready. Let's go. 24 delegates have been chosen for the Miss Universe Nigeria pageant and now it's time to make your choices known. To vote, visit the website at www.missuniversenigeria.org. Identify your preferred delegate, follow the link and fill in the details. It's that simple. The top three delegates with the highest number of votes will be fast-tracked to a spot in the top 10. So vote now to get your favorite one step closer to the Miss Universe Nigeria title. Remember, the universe is watching. Good morning, Lagos. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, Africa. Good morning, world. Welcome to your seaside radio station. We're Rhythm 93.7, the number one hit music radio station. We're number one in music, number one in entertainment, number one in sports. Let's be honest. Not everyone likes the start of a new day <laughs> or the rush that comes with a new day. If you're looking for great fun, intelligent conversations and entertainment stories, we've got great music, great content, great interviews with all the amazing artists that you can think of. So, you do not want to miss out on anything. Stay with us, there's more to come. This is Rhythm 93.7. <laughs> Number one, number one, number one, hit music station. Rhythm 93.7. Watch. More news. For the Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala says the nature of warfare is evolving rapidly. More lifestyle. With all that is going on around the world, clothes are one item that no one can do without. More business. Let's look at the banking sector where the aggregate non-performing loans of nine banks increased to 814.08 billion. More sport. All right, fantastic day to you. It's going to be a special one for oh, the Super Eagles. More inspiration. Speak no evil of any person. Enjoy a little bit more of everything for the entire family. Silverbird Television. It's about entertainment and more. Cholera is a highly infectious and dangerous disease, but it can easily be prevented and it can also easily lead to death. To avoid cholera, wash your hands frequently with soap and clean water, especially before eating and after using the toilet. Drink safe water from a protected source such as bottled water. Avoid raw or undercooked food, especially seafood and raw vegetables. Avoid close contact with people who have cholera or are showing symptoms. And don't forget to keep your environment clean dispose of waste properly and keep your living area free of garbage. This is a message from the Silverbird Group and Hypo Super Bleach.
Service chiefs converged at the presidential villa for an emergency security meeting as protests escalated across the country. The meeting comes amid growing concerns over the volatile nature of the demonstrations. The situation took a disturbing turn with the appearance of Russian flags among protesters in Tudunwada, Kaduna State, raising alarm bells about influences on the unrest. And what we realized is that yes, initially people said it was um, a peaceful rival, but we have warned against it because we realized that there are individuals that are willing to take advantage of it to cause mayhem, and we can see clearly what has happened since it has commenced. Criminals have taken over, a lot of looting, a lot of uh, stealing and all sorts happening. And besides that, I'm also aware, we're also aware that I'm seeing, all of us have seen it, where some uh, foreign flags have been flown within the sovereignty of Nigeria, and that is totally unacceptable. Uh, we are warning in, in clear terms, and the president has also said we should convey this, that we will not accept anybody, any individual flying any foreign flag in Nigeria. That is treasonable offense and it will be viewed and treated as such. General Christopher Musa clearly stated that the security agencies are fully committed to upholding democracy in the country. All security agencies are here to defend democracy and ensure that democracy continues to strive. We will not accept anyone pushing or taking any action seemingly or for whatever reason to want to push for any change of government democracy is what we stand for democracy is what we continue to defend for those of them flying flags if you see a lot of them are kids being pushed to do that we're following up with those ones that are sponsoring them those that are pushing them because you know the flags were also made we identified those areas and we're going to take serious action against that the president is clear on his instructions on non for us not to accept anyone that wants to disrupt the peace and tranquility of Nigeria. And we are all standing here together to show Nigerians that we're working closely, we're working together in synergy to ensure that there's peace and tranquility in Nigeria. That we have assured Mr. President. General Christopher Musa addressed allegations of armed personnel involvement in looting, stating that no military personnel participated in such activities. Instead, they assisted in evacuating stolen products recovered from looters helping to restore order and maintain security. You saw the Chief of Defense Staff, Christopher Musa, declaring the hoisting of another flag, country's flag in Nigeria as treasonable. And that anyone who does that, I mean, especially during this protest, would be uh, in for it. Uh, there were reports on Saturday. In fact, social media, Gog, everywhere you have the reports where some protesters in Kano State uh, were waving the flag of Russia during the protests, you know, in that part of the country. And the question was, in what way was you know russia you know relevant to the protests in the country uh, could there be other issues uh, uh, deeper than what we seem to be seeing with regards to how this protest is being uh, you know uh, being, being prosecuted by the organizers and those who believe in it uh, your guests may be as good as mine this morning is no different is it tuesday we have him here sitting pretty uh victor Ita is an uh, in-house analyst thank you indeed for joining us on his hub today it's always good to be here on a Tuesday morning and uh, I was actually looking at the flag to be yeah. sure that none of my colors I'm wearing is a sync with the <laughs> Russian flag and um, I, I was being very careful on that oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so to speak look at that. And the Russian flag is yeah. red blue and white yes I, I was actually looking at your tie I, I suspected it but it's clear now it's fine <laughs> look at you and then for, for, for the records mm. Nigeria and Russia have fantastic 
bilateral relations. We're very good with Russia. And at this point in time, aside some issues, I'm sure that most of our callers may want to delve into, wait, there's no, there's no correlation. Uh, is anyone who goes to Mali, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, way very close to the borders of those who actually, uh, you know, protested with the, waving the Russian flag on, on Saturday? We want to take a look at this and what it means for this particular protest in the country. We'd like for you to join in the conversation. The lines will be open in just a moment. Victor, Russian flag. It's not, uh, I see Olympics uh, are holding, it, games are holding here. It's not, I see uh, the Russian president is visiting and we're welcoming and say, okay, Mr. Putin, you're welcome, or the spokesperson or something that Nigeria, Russia are doing, I mean, as friends, so to speak. But some people waving the flag during the protest. What would this mean to you? It's something that we all must condemn. Uh, let me first of all thank the swift uh, reaction from the presidency to. Uh, to so make sure that this is uh, this is this is uh, you know this that Nigeria should disregard this and uh, this doesn't become a narrative in a very country where sovereign uh, country. Uh, I know that uh, some uh, some nations uh, would want to have a thing or two to do with Nigeria, like you rightly uh, alluded to the fact that uh, we we'll have a good bilateral relationship between Nigeria and Russia. It uh, is no longer news that Russia has interests, want to have, they are interested in uh, Nigeria, but uh, this should not be during a protest. You cannot hoist another country's flag in a sovereign state like Nigeria. And we are the, we are the mother of Africa. Yeah. So everybody, everybody will be interested in what happens in Nigeria, but it's not to come mm. and uh, to come and cause confusion mm. in, uh, uh, in national issues like uh, uh, the protest. The protest is a protestation as it goes, is uh, the citizens talking to the government. Either we are okay or we are not okay with what you've done uh, so far. <coughs> it's some form of referendum, uh, but the point is that it shouldn't have any coloration of any foreign interest mm. when nigerians are protesting it must be for national interest no other nation should sponsor and that being said i would say that the organizers of the protest they have some question to answer mm. because for now somebody said i was listening to radio was driving down to the office this morning that for if that thing was happening up down south we we are extremely without you know without uh, talking down on anyone from the north we are pretty informed in the south someone knew the color of the russian flag someone had the contact of taylor one of the person that was arrested his name is something is the son name is taylor all of the taylors actually are <laughs> arrested had so, 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 so at the end of the day someone had the contact of uh, of uh, taylors mm. In, 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 in Kanu and Kaduna and other, uh, and even in, in uh, Katsina, the home of the former immediate past uh, president of Nigeria. So they, there is some form of coordination that went into the production of that flag. So questions, questions must be answered. There are questions and we need answers. There are questions. Where do we get these answers from right now? Because um, it, it is really, really, it, it has changed the dynamics of the protest. It, it was end on the, end, end, hashtag end on the protest. Mm. What dimension is it taking right now? How, how much should, how seriously should government take this? this Extremely this? serious. Mm. Extreme, that's why you see the CDS uh, coming out to say we condemn this in its totality. And that those calling for Russian intervention, those wanting Nigeria to go the Burkina Bay, Burkina Faso, and then uh, Niger, uh, Niger way, it, it, it's, it's a no. It's a no. If Nigeria boils, the entirety of Africa boils. So we cannot, we should not. Everybody, every good meaning Nigerian should come out. Every critical stakeholders in the northern, not just political, but religious and traditional settings must come out to condemn in the totality this uh, the the fiasco because i would say it's a fiasco the russian embassy came out to say we are not but well, of course you take it with a pinch of salt because russians are you know until the today is what the war that's going on in ukraine is a special uh, there's a special uh, intervention. intervention going on in ukraine it's not war they will always deny that it's not it's not war so they are quick to to give uh, denial but uh, uh, there should be an iota of some bit of iota of truth 
in whatsoever so, because of the coordination. Maybe some would say that why should anyone go that way at this mm. point in time? Uh, I need to can also very. We would like for our callers to join us in this conversation as to how we're seeing a Rus Russian flags mm. being waved in Nigeria in support of the protests. Uh, it's good enough. I mean, you can see the, the official statement by the Russian, Russian embassy, embassy yes. in, in, in Abuja and the fact that it associates uh, itself from the country, it associates itself from the protests in the country and recognizes the sovereignty and respects the sovereignty of the country. Uh, some people won't take it with a pinch of the soul. They will take it seriously because just as you said earlier, which everybody knows all over the world, Nigeria, when it comes to Africa, is not a small fry. Regardless of the challenges we're faced with, oh my goodness, you know that uh, Nigeria is Nigeria by all standards. Uh, would the uh, military regimes in across uh, outside our borders, very close to us, in Mali, in Niger, Burkina Faso, and what have you, uh, will you have an impact? Remember also that most people who are Nigerians are sometimes Nigerians. Some have mixed blood, some have intermarried, some have businesses just across, but they just cross from here to here. I always said I served in Sokoto State, and there is one local government, Leila. It's just one step. It's like you are in uh, Kotonu, mm -hmm. in Nigeria. One step from one gate to this, you are in Nigeria, or you are in Nigeria. You're in Nigeria. So we'd like for you to join in the conversation. Is the Russian government, uh, you know, has he said enough? Has most government do much more in really letting us know as a people that it is not interested in infiltrating the forces in the country, not just a statement, something even bigger. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just wonder, David. We have a first caller on the show this morning. Let's speak with Marzi Okora for who joins us from Abia State. Uh, Marzi, good morning. Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, that's Marzi Okora from Aru. You see, the Russian flag has a very bad pronoun, that we shall pronounce very to be calling. Because you ask yourself, who are who initiated this Russia? To, because what is what, yet, what is what we are seeing now about the Russian flag? You know that what happened in Mali? From Mali, you saw Niger. They were showing Russia before you talked to Arabic say you see Russia coming to that place. But the question now is that who are the initiators? All those boys and girls carrying all this, do they have money to produce to eat? No sort of producer. They mean they must be sponsors. But the question is this we have to go back to the basis and finance. What are the reasons? Who are the who? Because we cannot see that in a sovereign country like Nigeria, we'll be hearing all these stories, some part of human beings we take that and there is an international community to take which is not heard yet. We are talking we are, we are British, we are British. Now look at what is happening now. It's a very, very bad community. That you see, our level of education, our level of education is the problem. We send it down without number. Illiteracy is what is happening in Nigeria. Somebody will come and give you two nana, that nana. Go and destroy you. At the end of the day, you come back to square one, you have nothing to do. You see how to use that being used as a, a weapon of mass destruction, which is not heard for this country. Yeah? Comment. Take action. We have to go back to the business and find out who are who are responsible. All right, Thank you so very much. Let's now speak with Ifa Yolumba from Alu in the yeah, State. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ifa Yolumba, Thomas Yolumba. I'm calling from my community. I'm located with me in Alu here. Well, we say what is still unfolding. We say it's still unfolding. Up north, it is happening that the protest is assuming a more dangerous more sinister dimension. And I remember a few days ago, I said, program. I warned that a to be going to have with this uh, kind of protest. Coming from the north, I said it that the protest is a trap. And they are writing to take with caution up north, and now it has begun. The teeming large number of youth we know unemployed, otherwise called a murderer, mostly. We are then bringing you over the details that I did the under the guise of our American culture. In order to manipulate and use them at times like this, I warned that the protests come from the north. But you do understand. They are coming to that trap with the killing of 17 protesters up north there. And then another issue is that of the Agota and his refinery. All right. Well, what thank you. The Agota and his refinery. Remember, he's a major stakeholder in the northern establishment. Why right. you ridicule him or try to frustrate him? You are frustrating not an interest. He's an elite. 
All right. We, we, we thank you indeed, Chief Olumba, for your intervention today. Please, I know that you're a very uh, in a regular caller. Let's always be mindful of the one-minute mark. Okoro from River State, we thank you for joining us on the program this morning. Okay, Okaro, I beg your pardon. Okaro. Yeah, good, good morning. morning. Yeah, well, uh, the issue of Russian flag is a serious matter. But the problem we have is that our current leaders and politicians are so distracted with personal interest that they don't know when there is heavy problem. When you don't have the divided house, outsiders cannot have interest. What is happening is simple. It's just that people don't want to think deep. The protesters are trying to identify with Russia. Russia did not sponsor them. They are trying to identify with Russia because they know that if there is crisis or if there is maybe a military coup, the West will definitely want to support a democracy and they will be resisted by either the U.S. and the West. So when such a, a, a situation arises, they are trying to identify with Russia because they know that in the global uh, uh, system now, there is a Western and Eastern bloc. And that was what happened in uh, Nigeria and all those other places. Yeah. So it's what the government should take very serious, not by only going to look for the people or fight them, but trying to solve the problem in the country that is causing this division. That is the solution. You cannot just sit down okay. in one place and be taking decisions that will affect the whole nation as if you are ruling a singular state. No, thank Nigeria you, is a Carol. big place. And Th thank you. Thank you for your contribution, Akaro, this morning. Let's now speak with Uche, who calls us also from Abia State. Uche, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, now seeing a different uh, approach with the military regards to the people that are flying a, you know, Russian flag in the name of protest. Because in the South East, if a military person sees anybody that wears anything like the African camouflage, you are in trouble. I'm not asking, is there no military checkpoint in the North? We are those people that we are, you know, carrying those uh, uh, Russian flags. The rule of engagement, is it different, you know, to some other uh, people? And the rule of engagement of military. The CDS is warning. I had him warning them, not arresting them or brutalizing them. In the past administration of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Buhari, he negotiated with Boko Haram. I did not even hear or had any time he negotiated with the, uh, people that are agitated for Biafra. You see the problem of the country. You don't have one rule for, you know, everybody. You have different rules. How will the country move forward? That is my question. When you have a different rule to different people. Okay. God bless you, people. God bless you, Chair. We thank you for your intervention on the show today. Let's speak with Ada, who joins us from Plateau State. Good morning. Hello, How is Joss today? Ada, calling from Joss Plateau State. Yes, wonder shall never end. Talking about uh, flying a um, Russian flag. Let me tell you something. You are, people are addressed the way they are, they are dressed. You know, there's double standard in Nigeria. When I saw that, and I was saying to myself, as you were listening, was Southeast. I thank God, my Southeast did not want to uh, protect. As if it was the Southeast. The way they are talking about it, this is the way they, are, they talk about it. It's going to be a nine days wonder. After a while now, you will not hear about it again. They will tell us that all oh, the children, they don't know what they are doing. Those children are Marjorie. People use them. Those children are so, they don't even know what they are carrying. They don't know what they're living on that flag. And they will not get to the bottom of it. They are not telling us they are getting to the sponsors, they are getting to the tailors. After a while, you will not hear about it again. That is Nigeria for you. All the same, the way things are going, I pray this Nigeria, Nigeria will stop these double standards and, uh, I mean, uh, uh, handle matters to its logical conclusion. So we know that we are one Nigeria. A, a Nigeria where no one, no man is our friend. It's not a question of changing national assets. You saw what happened during the process. Most of them defy the new, uh, I mean, the new uh, national anthem. And so, uh, singing the Arise of Compact, what does that tell you? you know, that means they have lost trust in the country. They, uh, how can people be okay, talking to the who's when there's bloodshed, shooting protesters and all whatnot? All, all the right. same, and this is what I'm saying, please, the protesters, please and please, let them see their thoughts. 
Let them yeah. stop this protest. If this protest continues, there's going to be a problem. Uh, we have lost uh, enough lives already. Mm. All right, let's talk about Nigeria. Okay, I didn't mind. Thank you. Thank you, Ada. Thank you. We have another caller. I didn't get the, the caller's name. Okay, no, no call at the moment. Well, Victor, you've listened to all the all the calls we've had. I mean, one did say that um, it's likely they don't know what they're doing. I don't know if that resonates well with. Let, 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 let me start looking, by looking it. at the mm. the coordination mm. of, of of the act. Mm. Well, let me start up by uh, speaking straight to uh, uh, Mr. Uche. I called. Uh, we, we have to stop, you know, you know, putting fire to the flame of division in this country. If it happens in the south, we must condemn it. If it happens down north, we must condemn it. Any way it happens, Nigeria is a sovereign state. You can't even bring the narrative of Biafra into this discourse because it goes further to deepen disunity in the country. Mm. We must condemn it. Whether you are Igbo, you are Epoch, you are Ibibio, you are Yoruba, you are Hausa, anywhere in these uh, territorial boundaries of Nigeria, we must condemn it. Let's stop this divide and rule tactics. It doesn't help anyone. Saying that those guys, they don't know what they are doing. No, they know. They know what they are doing. Or, or, or maybe the, the, the beater of the drum knows what he's doing. Maybe they're carrying the flag and even know what they are carrying. Uh, what, somebody, I think Mr. Uche said that uh, nobody was arrested. About 800 persons right. have, been, have been, arrested. been arrested so far. Both the tellers, multiple tellers, and the uh, people, those who carry the flag, they've been arrested. It's not because they are houses. Are you saying that if they were from Igbo, they were from Efuk, they were from Yoruba, they would have carried up to a million of them? No, sir. We don't, at this point in time, we are close to a boiling point and we must not. All right, thank you so much, Victor. It has been very